morning, this is Jamie Shaw. I am a Senior CAD Support Specialist for the Illinois Department of Transportation, and today I'm going to cover how to process survey data in Open Roads tools in SS10. And then I'll do another video on how to do it in Open Roads Designer. First of all, we want to start out with the consultant resource page on the IDOT website. And if you don't know how to get to it, I'll just let me back all the way out. You want to go to on, from the home page, go to doing business, procurement, go to engineering, architectural, professional services. Then you want to scroll all the way to the bottom and hit consultant resources. And then you want to put, click CAD. Now, this is where you can get your SS4, SS10 environment. The SS4 and SS10 environment are exactly the same. The only difference between the software is SS10 gets its license from the connection client. SS4, they ended support and licensing for it through the server on December 31st, 2020. So everybody should be running SS10. And like I said, it's exactly the same software as SS4. It just licensed different. But here you download the i.cad exe, extract it, and there's set up a setup file in there and how to set it up. I'm not going to cover that in this video. If you're doing the i.cad environment or ORD environment, I can show you that later. It's the same way you download, download it and extract it, and it has the setup file in there to walk you through how to set it up. But what we're interested in is the computer design and drafting modeling and deliverables manual. So click on that and we'll get the CAD manual in PDF format, which you can download this. You can save it to your hard drive, to your company standards, whatever. Uh, but the one thing uh, I want to put out, point out right now, the CAD manual is in review and update for the transition to ORD. So when it's done in review and done editing, we'll put out a uh, CAD manual for ORD, because I know some of you are chomping at the bit to get it, but it's in review right now, and the example plans will probably be updated soon, too, as well. But if you go into this table of contents and go to Appendix I, Appendix I, let me zoom this up a little bit, covers all the um, survey feature definitions. So, like, 100 is the backside, it's tumble control point. It uses survey SBC cell, and it's do not include, and it's a part of the alignment. So it, we have all of our codes in here with a description, what level they're supposed to be on, what cell they're supposed to use, what line style. If it's part of the DTM or not, if it's DNI, it's do not include. If it's spot, it's a spot shot. If it's a break line, that, or break, then it's a break line. And then if you go to Appendix J, Appendix J, let me zoom it up for you, has all our linking codes in it. So one dot means it's used to begin a line. Two dot is used to end used to end a line. So for example, you're not going to put a dot, say 668 for the edge of road, edge of pavement, you're going to put a one dot 668. To end the line, you're going to put a two dot 668 not two periods not one period to begin at one two periods to end it you have to have the one dot and the two dot in there and the code behind it and there is a mistake in here close shave should be 10 dot not 12 dot because 12 dot is start pc so download this refer to these and the, and the code survey codes and I'll show you an example of what the codes look like when it's processed. This is a job I was helping the consultant with. If you look at it, it's tab delimited. It has the linking or has a feature code in it and you know double code. So I don't have the list with me right at the moment, so I can't tell you what each one of them is. Some of them I know, some of them I don't. But you can see they don't have any linking codes in there. So when we import it, it's not gonna have any linking codes with it. Another file I have right here, um, this is one from District 6, we'll open number one, you'll see 
that's got a dash 27 in it so it's probably uh, a culvert or uh, something like that and it, the dash 27 is the size um, but you see how they do their begin line that's a 1.296 to begin the line and you see you have multiple 1.296s and then as you scroll down you see you'll have a 2.296 where they end of the line now the reason for the one is you have say right side of the road is 1.623 and the left side of the road is the, gonna be the same code you put a 1.623.1 so you can differentiate between the size of the road because they're the same line feature code they have to have a you know something to differentiate the two between otherwise they'll just draw lines everywhere and you can double code you know so you have you do each side you can double code um, you can add material codes in this and you want to kind of do it in this format this is all common to the limited and then it's space to limited too because you got space between the codes and i'll show you how to do that when you when you're importing the file but we're going to go to power geopack let me close this file and we'll go back to this one we're going to go to power geopack And we're going to create a new drawing and it has to be a 3d drawing so you're going to have to go pick the i.ng 3d dgn hit open and then we're going to give this a name and call it so we'll hit save there's your drawing you just created hit open take power geopack a little bit to open up and create the new new file let's see I have Explorer which is right here I have project Explorer docked right here and I have all these tabs up here at the top if your project explorer is missing tabs go to settings project explorer settings and civil standard civil model survey utility model file and links should all be set to true if they're set to false then you need to change them to true and then hit ok and all the data will show up here so in under survey tab we're going to go to the survey data and you see we have a default and we have field books i'm going to right click new and create a new field book now if, if you're working on district specific specific surveys and you're coding them according to what the district specifies then they have a TIW file set up which um, I'm not going to show you at this time but they have a TIW file so you could theoretically drag and drop the survey file on the field book one and it'll ask you for the TIW file. You just choose the district you're working in. And as long as you have it set up to how the TIW file is coded, it will process the survey with no problems. But I'm going to show you how to use file using text port import wizard, you know, just in case you don't actually follow every bit. You know, they may have three codes and you're only using two codes. So you can set up a TIW file of your own so I'm going to click on the text file and I'm going to import it so I'm going to hit, hit open and your survey data is going to look like this the next thing we want to do is hit next or here I'll go back so if you had if you wanted to use their TIW file you could go here and pick their TIW file so district 1 district 2 but you got to pay attention to what their stuff is that's that one's tab delimited point number northing easting elevation code and note now district 3 is a little different it's comma delimited comma delimited so that one's space delimited for district 5 and they have a tab delimited so you got to pay attention to how you're coding stuff to use the TIW file but we'll go ahead and make a TIW file just for you we know we looked at our data and was tab to limits, so we come in and pick tab, and then we hit next. 
And then at this pane, we hit point name, northing, easting, elevation. And this is going to be code, code, and code because we have three codes in a tab delimited format. Now the next step is to hit finish and it's going to ask you if you want to create a TIW file. So create a TIW file, we'll call it, well, I already have one created, call it Martin, because that was the project I was working with, and then save the settings. So if you have multiple survey files, the next one, you should be able to drag and drop it and hit Martin and it'll come right in. Now you see, you didn't have any linking codes in this DGN, so now all you have is points. So to create the linear features, what I like to do is I'll go to my level display, I'll turn all the survey features off. Um, we can leave the SPC cell, so uh, point numbers I don't really care about, elevations I don't really care about. I want to turn all this off except for field code and I want field comments so I know what it is like that one's a 6, 604 that one's a, got an edge of pavement there and there's an 811 there too double coded I don't know like I said I'll have my point list handy so I don't can't tell you right off the bat what my 811 is, but uh, anyway, we want to start creating linear features. So we're going to go to all linear features and go new. It's going to open this box up. So we're going to start with picking that one right there. Then we're going to go to the next one. And this is code 664, which I think is center line or Something, something to that effect. And you just keep picking the center line shots as you go down through here. And what you're doing is creating the linear feature for this chain, which if you would have line coded it, it would have drawn it for you. So that's good enough for now. I'm not going to do the whole thing. So once you have all those picked, go up here to this linear feature box and you hit accept. And it creates a linear feature. You see it added a plus sign in here. Now you have to go to that default. It creates a default. So you want to go to survey processing and pick on show details. And you want to change this to what was the point code 664 and I click on this. There's two ways you can do it. You can either click on it like that and change it or you can click on feature definition and go edit and type 